So, we have already seen why yesterday was not actually better, really, and also what seeks to stop us from seeing too many tomorrows. But what tomorrows am I so eager to see? Good question. Well, here's my top five. Number one, the mind and body. Without that in tip top, well, what's the point? We are on the cusp of some truly amazing breakthroughs, the like of which previous generations might not have even dreamed of. With rejuvenation therapies, we could not only stop aging, but we could even roll back the years, take away that gray hair, those wrinkles, and those other signs of growing old, and in return, give back tight elastic skin, strong muscles, and the immune system of your prime. In the course of doing this, bringing the end to an extensive list of ailments and diseases that prey on so many and cost them their dignity, character, and empties the personal and national bank balance. And for those accidents and rarer cases where replacement limbs and organs are required, no more waiting for an unfortunate donor losing their own life to extend yours, just a quick sample of your cells will be required and then from them, stem cells will be created, which will then feed a mix of 3D printers and special growth techniques. And you will be the recipient of brand new versions with no fear of the immune system rejecting it and no lifelong course of medication to stop rejection. Now, who wouldn't be glad of such technologies being just around the corner? Number two. 3D printing and lab grown. Well, everything. This is so wide in its scope of impact, it is quite incredible. Large scale print on demand will eventually become so good that it will supersede most other forms of manufacturing, which will lead to order fulfillment more geographically aligned with the end destination, usually the consumer. It will be quicker than transporting from a central global center and it will not incur the shipping costs, which once labor is not a significant part of the cost structure, will be the next cost cutting option. And for those items that are better suited, they will just be grown instead. And this could all happen underground near the required location, not taking up land better suited to plants and animals and not ruining the natural views. And where food is concerned, eliminating animal cruelty and suffering and vastly reducing the energy inputs, water usage and waste byproducts. An environmental win, win, win with no hint of lifelong antibiotic usage as is so popular in farming today. Just the optimum product in terms of taste, nutrition, safety, and quality, and none of the guilty conscience. This is just a first step on the pathway to matter replicators, but that, that's another day. Number three, space. I mean, space travel is one part, obviously, but that would be the fun recreational part, the bit that could really change the world for the better orbital industrial parks. Imagine all heavy industry and anything dangerous and polluting being done in space, powered by non-stop solar power, and whatever is needed on the planet is just dropped down the gravity well, or maybe coming back down via space couriers, using reusable SpaceX Starships powered by carbon neutral rocket fuel, well, methane and oxygen, created using solar power and carbon capture technologies. What benefits to our air, water and land, and the land that we can reclaim for nature and ecosystems and places for people to live, finally a time of clean air and clean water with a skyline to enjoy. And that is just the beginning. Then we can start asteroid mining. The amount of raw material that is just waiting for us to harvest and repurpose is truly mind blowing. More than we could ever need. 
well, for the next few centuries anyway, until we need that Dyson Spear. And we'll be on a whole new level by then. We could make mining our home planet a thing of the past from a bygone era, consigned to history books and tales of the Dark Ages before we knew better, and with it, usher in levels of abundance undreamed of where raw materials are no longer the constraining force or cost. At number four, I have AIs and computing. If we just look at what the potential future for GPT-3 as the beginnings of a truly usable AI are, all I can think of is a computer interface as powerful as Star Trek. Real world language inputs without having to be concerned with knowing commands and programming and with access and the ability to crunch so much data that whatever you can think to ask, it can answer or achieve. With the way GPT-3 can be seen right now taking real world language and performing any number of actions from writing code to books to games to poetry, understanding language, mathematics, accounts, law and anything else to become the go-to personal digital assistant that Apple, Google and Amazon have tried so hard to craft but are still woefully short. And then to have all that with no keyboards or mouse required no actual interface. And yes, for that you can look no further than Neuralink and similar companies as the very beginnings of what may be here in a decade or two. Seamless communication to empower whatever it is you want to do without all the tedious bits you dislike. Finally, number five is transport. Oil is dead. We truly stand on the cusp of a new era in transportation, both personal and mass transit, local, global and spacefaring. With the inevitable takeover of electric cars and a new world of autonomous transport, the millions who die in accidents will seem like Oh, a dark episode in a barbaric past that with companies like Tesla leading the way, the next decade will surely see level five autonomy in vehicles for personal transit and commercial deliveries and everything else in between. Then for longer journeys and the dream of Arthur C. Clarke, Hyperloops being developed by multiple companies giving the prospect of super fast transport between cities and continents like a train but faster than a plane. And then there is the prospect of starships doing continental hops and cutting the flight times to just an hour or so, Europe to Australia and back in time for tea. A mind-blowing thought. And then there is the age-old favourite of flying cars. Battery power density could be reaching the required threshold in just three to five years to make a vertical takeoff and landing electric flying car. That's a dive into my little brain and the things that get me interested for the future. What are yours? Tell me below.